God bless you abundantly in the wonderful name of our living Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We do thank God for his goodness and his mercy and his loving kindness. We thank God because he's God. This is a word from the Lord designed with us in mind. And I'm God's daughter, God's servant, God's handmaiden, God's prophetess, prophetess Freddie Mae Hillary. For such a time as this ministry. Want you today to know that God has given me a word, a word from the Lord designed with us in mind. Want you to get your Bibles. You know, I read from the King James Version of the Bible, and I'm going to get my notes and my Bible, because you know God always gives me things, and I have to write it down so that I can retain what He said. Today we're going to be talking about a, a very important subject. And I'm sure that most of us can identify with it and know what it's about. And the title of the uh, teaching that God gave me today is Running Away. Hallelujah. And we thank God. We as children of God have a tendency to run from situations, conditions, positions, people, places, and things. Most of the time, we refuse to confront wrongdoing, and we make excuses why things are so messed up in our lives or messed up in the world today, because we, when I say we, I'm talking about people of God, will not take a stand for the things that we are supposed to take a stand for, okay? You know, in the 90s, Frankie Beverly and Mays, they made a song called running away <laughs> hallelujah and it's so appropriate for to describe some of us today some of us that say we are children of God but we always run in from situations and circumstances okay let me tell you this is the way his song goes and I'm not going to sing it but I'm just going to read the uh, lyrics he said if I had my way I'd tell you what I'd do I make it all okay and peace for me and you. I know you got trouble, but out of that you learn. It's the things you want most are the things that you have to earn. It said, running away. We need some rejuvenation. That's right. Running away. Leaving a bad situation. Uh, running away. That's what we do. We run from things. And then he said, if you get confused, don't you go nowhere else. You'll find all you need right there in yourself. We all like to boogie, but life is not a game. If we don't hurry up, y'all, none of this will change. Running away. We need some rejuvenation. That's right. Running away. Leaving a bad situation. <laughs> and we thank God for Frankie Beverly and Mays because uh, he sings songs and they are right appropriate, right in line with our life. Like joy and pain is like sunshine and rain. You can't have joy without having some pain. You can't have sunshine and not expect some rain because the sunshine makes things grow and so does, so does rain. Joy, we are happy, but when we have pain, we can appreciate the joy. So he has made a lot of songs that are just fitting for us to apply. We can't run away because why? We're instructed in the Word of God, and if you'll turn to uh, Exodus, the um, and I have this written down, so I'm not going to turn to it. Uh, Exodus, the 14th chapter, and the 13th verse. Read the word of God, read on this wise. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Then in Psalms 46, 10a, it said, Be still, and know that I am God. Romans, the fifth chapter, in the second verse, say, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope. Of the glory of God. And Ephesians 6.13 said. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. 
so that you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And then they say, um, Philippians 1, 27b, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. You know what I'm saying? We can't expect to have a change in our life in the situations or conditions or trouble that we have when we, not, we, when we fail to deal with it. We need to stand because that's what God wants us to do. Want us to submit ourselves unto him, then resist the devil, and the devil will flee from us. Now, we don't have any business running from the devil, but we see more Christians standing around talking about what is going on. I was in a, in a Bible study yesterday, and because of some things that are going on in the church, they're saying how we got to, like, give money so we can get this situation straight now. Let me tell you, everybody is in a crunch right now. And everybody's going to be in a crunch. But even if we wasn't in a crunch, our money, our blessings, our prosperity comes from God. You know what I'm saying? So when people are expecting people to do something, the Bible says, except the Lord builds the house, the labor labors in vain. There's a division in the church, in the most of the churches you go to. Because the people of God do not, most of them, now don't get offended because I'm not talking about all of us. Some of us do not have integrity. We're not upright. We're not honest. We'll say one thing and do another and then get angry when somebody calls us on the carpet about it. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of pastors that don't, won't do what they're supposed to do and then blame other people because the church ain't where it's supposed to be. But if God has you as the shepherd, then you're supposed to talk to the Lord, discuss things to God, and then follow God's instructions. But churches are ran by the trustee boards. They are ran by the deacon board. They're not ran by the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? And then when the move of God comes into the church, they want to jump on the person that God is using to, to, to do what he wants to do. But you have to stand forth and declare what thus saith the Lord. It's not going to be popular. You know, let me tell you now, I, me, myself, and I, I get where I want to run away. Oh, hallelujah. I get tired of people telling me this and that and the other when I say what well, thus said the Lord. But after I've said it, i got to stand forth in the liberty wherewith he has set me free. And never mind about their faces. They want to jump on you. All of them hop at the same time about something that I say the Bible say. And the Bible does say it. It's the word of God. And now as I said, there's a division in here. And then they say, that's, that's natural. Uh, you may you have a church unless you have a division. And the Bible says that a house divided against itself shall fall. There should not be a division. We should be one mind, one body, one faith, one baptism, oneness. And that's how God blesses. And the reason that a lot of churches are folding and going out of business. Can you imagine God's house going out of business? If it was God's house, it would still be in business. Oh, no, I won't see it. There's no short in God. But yet it's still we the people. We fail to depend on the one that made us. And we want to depend on the bank. We want to depend on the system. And when things doesn't act right or do right, then we say it's y'all's fault. No, no, no. It's your fault. You're in charge. You do what God tells you to do. Like I have to do what God tells me to do. And see, I would run away. You know, it's easy for me to leave out of an organization, you know. But see, God sends me places where he sent me. That's where he want me to be. But guess what? I don't want to stay there when I get there because of all the hell that is there. But because of the spirit that of God, that's God that's in me makes me stand when, it, when the flesh don't want to stand. But we got to stand and we got to show forth what God has said. And you can't be shucking and jiving, you know what I'm saying, and, and being folding just because people say this and say that. Then the Bible lets us to know. See, Frank of Evans said we need some rejuvenation, you know, strength and rest restoration. That's what is needed in the body of Christ. We need to be restored, hallelujah, so we can be strong and stand. And in Galatians, it says, Galatians 5, 1, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled with the yoke of bondage. 
Then Ephesians 6, 12 says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and have it on the breastplate of righteousness. You understand integrity, uprightness, honesty. It's about Webster say moral principle. But the Holy Spirit told me spiritual principles. The word of God is our instruction on how we should live, how we should stand, who we should trust in, where our hope is. We are hoping and believing in God. And we have to be strong Hallelujah. In the Lord and in the power of his might. Not strong in Freddie Mae Hillary, but strong in the Lord. And when we're strong, when I'm strong in the Lord, hallelujah, even though my flesh is weak, hallelujah, the Spirit of God is strong in me. And he have had a And I've been praying for me that I be able to stand in these last and evil days. Why? Because so many things are going down. And let me tell you, when you're in a place, that people don't agree with what the words say. They won't even stand when the Bible, word of God, being, is being read. But they'll stand, hallelujah, for the pastor to come in. They won't reverence the word of God, but they'll reverence the man. You know what I'm saying? Which is just false reverence. Uh, uh, they're not really respecting him. I mean, they're just shamming. You understand what I'm saying? Because if you don't respect God, how can you respect the man of God? Oh! Hallelujah. If you won't stand for the word of God, how can you stand for the man of God? Let me tell you, things are out of order in our churches. Why? Because people are running from responsibility. My God, you cannot be responsible. I hear, I got, uh, you know, people in my family, sisters and, and uh, nieces and things, and I don't know people. They say they're grown. I'm grown. I do what I want to do. No, grown people accept responsibility. Grown people take care of themselves. Children depend on their parents to take care of them. But I got grown folks in my family, and they depend on my daddy to take care of them and then expect for me to do this and do that. You know what I'm saying? But yet they're grown and want to tell me what to do. Tell me. They don't want to be bothered with me because I tell them, you need to be giving your life to God. You need to straighten up and fly right. I had to hear that because I wasn't straightening up and flying right when I was in my uh, 20s. You understand? But after even in my early 30s, but when I was 32, 33, the Lord introduced himself to me. Oh, hallelujah. And I couldn't deny that, it, that God is not real. God is not true. But God has principles and he has standards for us to live by. And we as people of God, saying that we are people of God, and every Sunday go to church, and then come out of church, or not even in, while in church, nothing but confusion. You know what I'm saying? It makes you not want to go to church, because there's no order. There's no order in church. And you know, in the church, you know, most churches you go to, it's a form of godliness, but what they do? They deny the power thereof. Because we run away from the things that we should address. Everything goes on in the church. If people ain't supposed to be walking around when the message is going on, then we got ushers to enforce that, but they don't do that. They run from their, uh, they ain't going to listen. You can't talk to these people. You can't tell them nothing. You know, you stand fast and you do what you're supposed to do and do it with power and authority. And most of the time, the reason that we can't do it with power and authority because we're not filled with the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit is missing in the church. That makes us run when situations come, when trouble comes. We want to run from it. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Instead of standing still and seeing the salvation of the Lord. And then um, we look at things and we thank God that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can think and even ask according to the power that work in us. But let me tell you something. If we do not allow the God of our salvation to lead us by the Holy Spirit that he's placed in us and we're always conforming to the things of this world and always looking for President Obama to do something for us or looking for the bank to help us out instead of looking to the hills from which cometh our help our help come from the Lord and when you make an appeal to people people can't do anything you have to make an appeal to the Lord and ask God to help. 
And if God don't help us, then we don't have any help. And the people that have money that could help, they're not going to help. You got to go to God and God will close every door that you try to go in that you think you're going to get some help trying to avoid him. You can't avoid him. He's the one that made us. This is this is this world belongs to him. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and they that do of therein. And we want to go to everybody else. Hallelujah. And bypass God. Hallelujah. We want to say we are Christians and bypass God. And then disrespect God's vessels. My God, if God made pastors, God made prophets, God made apostles, God made evangelists and teachers, he put gifts in all his people, but the gifts have got to work. And then they have to be allowed, you know, but it was one man show, a one man show. And then when trouble comes, then everybody, you want everybody on the bandwagon. But uh, it's always me. And you say it's not about you. It's about God. But all I can see is you. You understand? All I can see is me. Uh, but we got to crucify this flesh. We got to mortify the deeds of the flesh so that we can walk in the spirit so we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because what the flesh wants. The flesh wants to say, yeah, God put me in charge and I'm doing this and that's what things are working. Things are working because God is working them. Okay? So what we got to remember is this. Turn to um, Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Let us look at verse 58. This is for everybody. I'm telling you, I'm, this message first came to Freddie Mae Hillary because I'm saying, Lord, I'm tired. I want to run away. I want to leave the church. I want to stop going because I'm sick of it. But it ain't them, it's me. You know what I'm saying? It's not them, it's me. I got my eyes on them instead of looking to the hills from which cometh my help. So what I want to do? Running away. <laughs> Leaving a bad situation, that's right, running away, hallelujah. I can't run, I must stand fast and proclaim what thus said the Lord. I know that the devil is on my track and he's trying to turn me back, but I know that he has no power over the power that God has given me. For God has given me power over all the power of the adversary. My God, that hallelujah, you said whatsoever thing I bind on earth, he bind it in heaven. Whatsoever thing I bind in earth, because the Bible says in, he'll bind it in heaven. Whatsoever thing I loose in earth, he'll loose it in heaven. So I'm really, this teaching came to Freddie Mae Hillary because she want to run from a situation. Running away. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. We cannot run. We must stand. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having our loins girded about with truth. And in my closing scripture, I'm going to read uh, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. See, I'm not serving people. I'm serving the true and the living God. And then I submit to the will of God by doing things that he tells me to do. And everything that he tells me to do, most of the time, people are saying, that ain't not a God. God didn't tell me that. No, he wasn't supposed to tell you. He told me. But then you should have enough God in you to recognize the move of God when it's moving, to recognize the spirit of God, hallelujah, when you see it. He said, not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord. When the Lord sends help, he sends help. Ah, hallelujah. But a lot of times the help is not received because people want you to do what they want you to do, but they tell you what God is not telling you. So I want you to pray for me as I pray for you that we will stop running and that we will be people of integrity, that we will stand, hallelujah, in the uprightness of God. There is no morally good. I'm a morally decent. I don't steal. I don't cuss. I, but do you know what I'm saying? There's none good but the Father. And except the Father fill you with the Spirit, there is nothing in you that's good. Understand that? So we understand we always boast about and want to think ourselves so much. But our righteousness is as filthy rags. And if we are not doing things God's way, there is no righteousness in us. 
Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Why? Because he believed God. Freddie believed God and she went on YouTube because God told her to. And he imputed that to me unto righteousness. And whatever it is that I need that he's going to do it, he's going to, he's going to fight this battle. And I'm not going to run. I'm going to stand fast in the liberty. I'm going to stand and proclaim the word of God. And I'm going to pray that you also will stand for what is right. And the word of God is right. And all his judgment are done in truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And that's what we need to be teaching and preaching. You must be born again so you can stop running away. May God bless you abundantly. In Jesus' name.